every now and then, things get serious. Yeah. Every now and then, people have questions. Yeah. <laughs> Every now and then, people want to know, well, now, you, you, you got like over 100,000 people checking out your site. You got like, you know, hundreds of people watching the videos. So just where and who and what are you doing? I mean, now, what happens when you uh, when you have a question? What happens when you run into conflict? What do you do about all these things? Well, I thought maybe I should introduce you to my board. You know, those people that help me out, that keep me straight, that advise me what to do when I really don't know what to do. So, when I really have a question as far as theology is concerned, when I really have a problem when it comes to knowing how to answer a person, when I don't know exactly what to write, then I ask my two companions here, what do you think? And they always offer me a good opinion. And I figure, yeah, okay, I could go with that. And so, that's my good advice I get. Let's have some fun. Now, whenever I run into direct confrontation, you know what it's like. You know, those kind of conflicts where boom, 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 people just don't get it. You know, they want to kind of like, watch me pull a rabbit out of my hat again. Buckle up my sleeves and... Wow, nothing's coming out of the hat. Huh. But they want me to be something that maybe I'm not. They want me to jump through some hoops that maybe I don't. They want me to be something they want to see. Well, that's when I consult this guy. He always helps me out on those occasions because I really don't know what to do with them either. So, I just give them a kiss. <laughs> but seriously, folks, come on. If you didn't know that God was talking to you, you wouldn't be watching in the first place. God is the one who works through us. It isn't us and our personality so much as it is God's word in his own choice of how he delivers it through us. Because at the moment of inspiration, when God comes into a person's life, then he chooses to, by way of observation, demonstrate himself through that person. That's what Jesus meant when he said that, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. For he was, and still is, and always shall be, the embodiment of God himself. He is the physical representation of God the Father. Well, if you want to see, you know, kind of like what God does in a person's life, guess what? Sinner, saved by grace. And that's what I'm all about, really. And that's why it amuses me in some ways, it confuses some people in other ways, and it kind of like downright makes some people wonder when they ask me, well, how did you get to where you're at? I say, well, God did it. Well, no, really, how did you, how many years did you study? Well, frankly, God did it. But, but didn't you, like, you know, go to Bible college? Or didn't you do all these other crazy things? You know, like, years and years and years of study and study. Well, actually, I was trying to find a loophole, you know, get out of it, you know. And uh, I didn't find one, but really, God did it. And the bottom line is, is, it's just God. I mean, it's not really me. You know, there's nothing good in me, and neither dwelleth no good thing. And the closer I get to God, the more obvious it becomes to me that, hey, I'm no different than you. <laughs> I just may be more dependent upon God than you choose to be. I may be more reliant 
upon His Spirit than you are. Because you see, I know that there are lots of people put these guys back to work while they review my work of what I'm doing and will send all the emails that you know people don't like about whatever's going on back to this guy in his office. <coughs> but I know there are people that spent hours and days and weeks preparing for a sermon, preparing to get all this stuff ready together. Oh, we got six services this week and we got to get it all together so that we can have all of our satellite campuses all online on track. Huh. Really? <laughs> wow. How's that working out for you? <laughs> you see, this ministry was done free. Freely we received, freely we gave. We only shared those things that we had seen, only those things that we'd heard, and only the things that we'd examined with our own hands. We didn't go out of our way to talk to people in a way that they didn't understand. We simply shared where we were at and what we're going through. And that's why Vidigo has been actually used by God the way he's used it, quite frankly, because we're just telling the way it is, what it is, as it happens. It's kind of like my garden, you know. It's like, well, a lot of you saw those tomato plants grow up, and some of you saw my corn die. <laughs> and we learned about soil and plantings and how watering and certain amount of soil and, and sunlight, you know, has to be in the right proportions in order for corn to grow slightly different than tomatoes. Because you see, you could almost grow tomatoes anywhere. Almost. But corn really likes a lot of light. You gotta make sure you got some deep roots because when the wind blows, it could knock your corn over. <laughs> I don't mean to be talking about stalks, but some of you have had your house blown down, haven't you? Well, that's kind of like my corn. Maybe you're planted in the wrong place. Maybe you ought to move out of wherever you are that keeps getting your house blown down. I don't know. Maybe there's a scripture about that. Maybe there isn't. But see, that's what the ministry is about. It's encouraging each other. It's never meant to be somebody standing up there and saying, I got all the answers. Ha, ha, ha. You know, and I'm going to tell you all about it. No. He's learning whoever he is or she is or they are just like you are. You see, God can use anyone at any time, any place he wants to, any way he chooses to. You may be being used right now to raise up children and that, that means you're a teacher <gasps> well I heard women can't teach well I don't know where you heard that I think that's probably the stupidest statement I ever heard I mean come on now let's get real who raised up the kids it sure wasn't daddy <laughs> if he's around but the bottom line is is that women have raised children up and they have taught them the same way the men have raised children up and taught them the same way that sometimes people get too carried away about some of the things they think they know when they really don't know as much as they thought they did but they put on these spiritual airs to act like they know more than they do. Quite frankly, I'm laughing at a lot of what people do because if they just put some common sense back into you know what we used to call horse sense you kind of realize that maybe sometimes Women make more sense than some of the men I've seen wandering around. Quite frankly, if a guy's got his britches down around his knees, I don't think he's got much to teach me. <laughs> I think he needs to learn how to use a belt. Don't you? Oh, I'm sorry, that was styling. I got it. I got it. See, here's my hat. You see it. Let me let me cock it to the side. Hey, I'm styling. Oh wait, let me put it on backwards now. Ooh, now I'm styling. Oh hey, wait, let me tilt it back over here and put it on. Oh, well, that may not be styling. You see, it's really not so much about who you are, but what God is doing in your life. And that's the reality of sharing or relating, as we say, your testimony, so to speak. Now, that's a spiritual term, and it sounds oh so, ooh, ah, let's talk testimony. Ooh, that's Christian. No, nah, how about, let's just talk, you know, like, What's going on with you today? You know, what's happening? You know, if 
God isn't happening in your life, then don't follow Him. I mean, I've told people that from day one, and sometimes people have looked at me and thought, that guy's a heretic. And I said, well, no, quite frankly, if God isn't real, you shouldn't follow Him. If Jesus isn't able to be demonstrated in some way to you, in a real way, if you haven't proven that God exists, then don't follow Him. Quite frankly, go your own way. Do your own thing. Party hardy. I mean, come on. If I didn't have a personal experience with God, as well as studying the scriptures, of course, and asking God in my life and all the other good things that went along with it, then I wouldn't be a Christian. Man, I'd be either partying big time, or I'd be into some philosophical kind of ideological idea that I've told most people I'd become an Orthodox Jew. You know, Well, anyway, somewhere in between, you know, maybe that's true. But for me, I know the reason why I follow Jesus is because He's real. <laughs> uh, and, and if he's not real for you, don't follow him. Don't be a Christian. Be whatever you want to be. If it works, go for it. In a few years, how's that working out for you? If it doesn't work, don't do it. And that's what video has been about, always. What works is usually what God is trying to get through to you. And so, I quite frankly tell people, if it don't work, don't watch it, don't do it, don't be it. But, <laughs> quite frankly, once you do find out God is real, ooh, <laughs> I don't know about you, but it'll completely change your life. <laughs> and it changed mine. Because then you got to kind of either lie about it and say to yourself, and maybe to others, eh, no, I don't believe in God. Yeah. Try that one on in eternity. Yeah. That ought to work out pretty good. But the truth is, everyone knows deep down inside, come on, let's give it up. Romans already said so. You know, Book of Romans says everybody's known God at some point in time. You can argue and pretend like you don't know, but you know. Yeah, you know. Now, you may argue about where you want to go, and I don't really care. <laughs> you can go argue with God about that one. <laughs> uh, you can go to any church you want to. I don't really care. You know, it doesn't matter to me. The point is, you know, and so do I. And so I choose to kind of cooperate and communicate with God. I like kind of getting along with him because he's got kind of like something in store for me that I can't do for myself. <sighs> and because he does, I kind of want to operate with him in going in that direction because it seems to work out better for me. Now, if something works out better for you, hey, go for it. If you think you're going to spend eternity, you know, like wherever you want to be, go for it. I don't know, but, you know, me, <laughs> uh, I'll take what I got because it's working. It's always interesting, though, how we can make up excuses for what we do and excuse ourselves more often than we really sit down and look at ourselves and say, yes, I am guilty, I did it. And you know, that's all God really wanted from us from the very beginning, was simply to admit who we are, to admit what we are. It's not like he can deny it because he can see your heart. It's not like we can hide from it. He can see everything. So it's kind of like, you know, you can wander around acting like a kid in the cookie jar, you know, and you got away with it, you think, but at some point in time, you kind of got to sit down and look at your life and say, is this really all it's cracked up to be? Am I really experiencing everything that I thought life was going to be? Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him. Revelation 3.20 One of the most liberating declarations in the New Testament is this. The true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeks such to worship Him. God is a spirit. And they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. John 4.23 and 24 Here the nature of worship is shown to be wholly spiritual, not physical. True religion is removed from diet 
you know, fasting and all these other things that people do and, you know, slicing and dicing and piercing and all that junk. And from days, you know, keeping certain days special and some days holy and some things this and some things that. True religion is removed from garments and ceremonies. It's not about the robes and it's not about, <laughs> about the hats and it's not about the little boxes you dye on your foreheads or even the gold that you wear on your rings. True religion is placed where it belongs, in the union of spirit of man with the spirit of God. That is worship. When God and man meet together as one. From man's standpoint, the most tragic loss suffered in the fall was the emptying of his innermost being by the spirit of God. Suddenly, inside, he was dead. He recognized spiritually he was not aware of the things of the spirit. At the far end hidden center of man's being is a bush fitted to be the dwelling place of the triune God. <coughs> there God planned to rest and glow with moral and spiritual fire. God would be our light. Man, by his sin, forfeited this indescribable, wonderful privilege and must now dwell there alone. In the cold, dark recesses of your heart is the cold, dark recesses of your heart. But should God come in there and set up his place, then light springs forth in the midst of darkness, and behold, you will see a great light. For so intimately private is that place that no creature can intrude, only you are there. No one can enter in but Jesus, and he will enter only by the invitation of faith. Behold, he says, I stand at the door. I knock. If you hear my voice, if you open the door, I will come in to you, and I will sup with you, and you will sup with me. I can tell you what kind of indescribable joy there was at my salvation. That's easy. I can tell you of the thousands of people and their testimonies of those that didn't feel something at the moment of their salvation. And yet, they, by process of developing a relationship, came to a place where they knew God and are in fellowship and communication with Him. I know this, when the Spirit of God comes into a man and God is in communication with that man and that man is in communication with God, nothing can come in between. There is something unique and distinctive about that person who becomes Christ-like in being with Jesus in being born again. There is nothing else in the universe that is quite like the Spirit of God coming inside of a man or a woman, a child or an adult. Because once that Spirit is there, it's as though their full essence of who they were meant to be suddenly is revealed and they start morphing from some dead being existence for themselves into someone who could be the light of the world and the salt of the earth.